Okay, let's take a look at these brushes. I want to test for this particular painting. Now, this is an entire set for about $22. I'll show you the screen capture of my purchase. And what I want to do is just quickly show you the brushes of what the set contains. And it is a good bit of brushes. Now these are supposed to be Sable. I don't know if they're Kalinsky or not. Some ads say they are, some say just Sable. But if they are even just Sable, that is a very good price. But here's my point. This entire set was $22. If I go with a number three or number two Windsor Newton, even the number two Windsor Newton, one single brush, is about 25 bucks just for one brush. Now this is a three. This one would probably be closer to $35, depending on where you get it and what's going on, if there's any sales or anything. But now the problem with any sable brush is once you keep using them, especially the way I do, if I keep scrubbing colors and mixing colors on the paper, I'll wear out that needle sharp point and I'll end up with a brush like this. So then you have a lot of watercolor brushes that are pretty much reduced to about a filbert brush instead of a nice needle sharp watercolor brush so with synthetics the problem with them i don't know if you can see this yet i just picked this windsor newton up and it's a professional watercolor brush synthetic sable the problem i have with most synthetics is the very tips start to hook and then you lose that point anyway, and it gets very tough, even with real small brushes, to make a nice thin line. That hook prevents you from doing that, and especially it'll start skipping as you pull the brush, and it'll give you an uneven thickness of a line. So the synthetics are really tough to work with, even though they're quite a bit more expensive than this entire set. Now, one thing I want to say about this set is I got this from Amazon, as you've seen, but most of the brushes I've seen of this particular brand are all sets. I went to the original maker of this brush, the manufacturer or what in between, but I can pick out individual brushes and then just buy maybe a half dozen number twos or something like that. And they only vary from about two I think they were $2.99 to about maybe six or seven dollars a piece, but again, they're supposed to be uh, sable brushes, which for that kind of price, it, it's nice to know that if you end up destroying them, uh, scrubbing them after a while, uh, it's not uh, a big of a setback as using the more expensive Kalinsky sable brushes. So I'm going to try these with this particular painting and see if uh, they could uh, pick up the tab, so to speak, of all the other Kalinsky Sable brushes I use, and then I may just switch to these. Uh, maybe every now and then I'll use a really good brush for working on a super fine detail of eyes or something like that, but then I may keep that brush only for that, so I try to hold that point uh, and not lose the point at all on that particular brush. Now, what I'm going to do is take this transfer and put it down with graphite paper so we could start painting and also I think I'm going to mask off the grasshopper and the, some of the cattail area with masking fluid and then do a splashy background but I have to do a really good job painting in that masking fluid because that will be the outer perimeter of my subject and then even if it's a darker color it won't matter but then down here in the white I won't paint anything down in here. What I'll do is maybe take some blues and, and just different violets and stuff and, and pull them down into here, but then daub them up a little bit with a Kleenex, and that will start my fuzzy edge for the cattail itself. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this down and get the drawing ready to paint, and I'll be right back. Okay, here's our grasshopper here, and what I'm going to do is start to fill it in with the liquid frisket that would be this right here now i have it in my own little jar this is what it looks like 
the incredible white mask liquid frisket. This is white though, but what I do is I actually put a little wee bit of cadmium orange in it. What I do is I mix up the cadmium orange into a water first and then I put it in just to tint it. And then that really helps me of where I'm painting it on just to give it a value, so to speak. Now, what I'm going to do is show you where I'm going to fill this all in. And I have to make this fairly accurate because this will become the outer perimeter of the grasshopper itself. But what I did was I drew those lines in. I'm going to have to redo those because for me, when I put this down and paint over these lines here, when I go to rub it off, it's going to rub the lines off too. And that is just a graphite paper. And I used a ballpoint pen this time to give me even a little bit heavier lines, but it won't matter. It'll still take it off. The previous drawing, that Caterpillar 955, I used a pencil drawing. That one I showed. I didn't bother showing this one. I just went ahead and did it. But we're going to fill this in uh, right now, and I'll fast forward through that. But what I want to do, though, is show you that I will take my brush soap, my cleaner preserver, and I'm going to rub it into the brush. And I'm just going to use an old brush here. And once I get soap on it, then that is what I will do. I'll wring out the soap just like this. Make sure I have a lot of soap in it. And if I use it for a while, I'll go ahead and rinse it out and then redo this. And then that way it will prevent from getting any kind of uh, frisket into the bristles. But I, I prefer myself personally uh, to use a brush for something like this. Now for real fine line work, we could use a rolling pin and a few other things. We'll do that at a future time when we have to. Let's go ahead and fill this in, but I'll just do this speed frisketing. Okay, I covered all I needed to cover. The white stem up here is gonna be fairly light, so I definitely wanna protect it, but then even the whole entire stem itself, the top of the cattail, has a lot of tans and browns in it. And if I start putting heavy blues or violets in, I may not want to contaminate those tans. Then it'll start looking muddy or grayish if I try and take lighter tans back over that. So I'm going to protect that also. And then uh, these edges, I try to make a little bit on the fuzzy side. But as I put down the colors, I can even hit just the edge with a Kleenex and lighten up that edge to start to make some of the areas of the edge of the cattail start to look fuzzy a little bit. Then that way I won't have no hard edge, which I don't want. I could take maybe even some white back over it or just scrub it out. A couple different things we could do there. But I also want to show you that I usually leave this frisket dry naturally. I found for myself that if I put a hair dryer to it, it gets a little bit more gummier and, and dries to the paper a little bit more than if I just leave it dry naturally. So I don't want to have any problems getting it off or I also don't want to deface my hot press surface uh, by trying to scrub off uh, the frisket too much. And then keep in mind also, I should have mentioned that this is the backside of Arch's hot press. It has a little wee bit more tooth than the real smooth front so I'm going to use that just to get some textures uh, into the grasshopper where I need them. But otherwise, I'll be able to make nice clean lines with this type of paper. This is 300 pound paper. Let's leave this dry really good and we'll be ready for some color. Okay, we're ready for our first couple washes. Now what I'm going to do is put down some real light layers just to make it look a little bit more complex than it really is. I think that would be a little bit better than just one standard wash of just simple basic colors that if I take some textures, they have to be real light though, because I don't want them to overpower my grasshopper, but they'll be like, just like loose shapes, uh, things in the background, 
uh, could be almost to someone's imagination, but it might be a little bit better than just one flat color or even a couple of different colors the whole way across and then that's it. So we're going to build up some layers here. We'll put the first one down. I'm going to wet the entire area that I'm going to be painting and then put some colors down, but then leave them bleed out to the white of the paper. And then I'll work some other layers in uh, after that dries very good. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to get this brush here. We're going to use this brush to wet it. And then I'm just going to use a regular squirrel mop brush to paint it in. Let's go ahead and start. And this is 300 pound paper. It could take a good bit of water to keep it ready to go. And I want to make sure I'm looking at it sideways to make sure I get it all wet so I don't have any dry spots yet. And then I can obviously vary the color and value and intensity throughout the background. Okay, let's go ahead. And we are going to take some blues. I think cobalt blue would be the best. And we're going to just wherever that water is that's where I'm going to keep it alive and then it'll puddle on the frisket just like digital and if I don't want that mark there and I will take it out or daub it with a Kleenex I'm gonna go with some cobalt violet and then that'll be it for this round there's a little bit of alizarin in there it'll go well with the greens of the grasshopper itself I gotta watch how strong it goes down I don't want to play with it too much I just want to put it down let me get a Kleenex here the watercolor eraser and there's the white now I could I could start making that's already starting to dry a little bit just take a little bit of water to it before it's too late and then I'm gonna daub those up a little bit and then we're going to lift some of this out a little bit. And that'll be my fuzzy edge. There's straight edges somewhere. In some places. And that's it. I'm going to leave that dry. I might take a little bit of texture to it with a heavy mist bottle. But i got to watch for the overspray. There's some texture. See how it's dripping off the wing. If I don't want that pattern there, I'm going to lightly lift that off. And then these, if these get too strong, these two streaks where I put down Alizarin Crimson that was right here that was pretty strong, what will happen is I'll go back over that with some other coats just to break that up. But that's after this completely dries, and then I'll take a couple layers back over because this will lighten up a good bit. This will come out almost like an airbrush effect on uh, hot press, the uh, hot press paper. You can see where that dry mark is now. The paint is still blending down, but what it's doing is it's sopping right where it's dry. I'll feather that back up into the paint so I don't get no line there. There we go. That's all white right there. And alizarin is pretty hard to pull out. And I had more alizarin than I did cobalt violet, so I have to be careful. Okay, we'll let that dry and that's it. And then once we get our background done, and we'll go ahead and pull off the misket, but then I will probably have to uh, redo the pencil lines, but that's okay. Let's leave it dry. Okay, this should be fairly dry this time. What I'm going to do is pull up a little bit of that alizarin because I only want cobalt violet this time the crimson is pretty strong and what I want to do is I'm going to just put down some real light washes with just a regular squirrel brush again mop and I'm going to do it quick but then I'm just going to leave them lay we might even put a little bit of burnt sienna in just some similar alike colors of the Cattail. And right now I'm just skipping over the paper. 
you can see that right in here, that subtle tooth is picking up a little bit, which will give me some texture. And I might put down one more coat. I'm going to get real light down in here. Let the cattail cover that over. And again, this will be real light. But then I have different shapes. Put a couple more darker ones up in here. I'm going to leave the top a little bit darker than the bottom. Because the top of the grasshopper, if you look at the photo, is a little bit brighter in the head area. Then it gets darker in the wing. And then also the uh, the leg has a nice highlight in it, but it, that's up against a dark wing, so we'll be safe there. But these kind of subtle textures right in here are, my opinion, what splashy watercolors are all about. Now I might give a couple little wee bit more strokes here, but I have to wait till this completely dries, or I'll just keep on muddying up my colors and keep piling them up instead of getting a nice, right here, a nice transparent wash just a glaze leave these dry and then i'll go maybe one more time and then we'll take off the miskit and we'll be ready to start painting in the grasshopper let's leave this one dry okay i think we're dry enough to ready for one more wash just here and there overlap this shape right here take these down and if these edges right in here or this edge up in here i really like so i don't want to overlap them too much or it'll diffuse the contrast between those two layers so right now what i'd like to do is stay in the areas where there's a whole bunch of even paint and put a couple more edges in there rather than destroy the edges i already have let's try that we're going to mix up again with the burnt sienna and the cobalt blue uh, the cobalt violets looking really nice too and these are going to be very subtle, very subtle. I don't even know if the camera could pick it up. Just any kind of random pattern. This is just, just about straight burnt sienna over everything that's there. But it is very soft. And I can dab a little bit if I think I'm getting too dark. Go a different direction. Mix it up a little bit, and this is just a sporadic background. I'm going to put a little wee bit of blue right by the face. That still should be wet, but that's okay. And we'll just leave it a pastel looking background. But this is just give you an idea if you want to try glazing technique. These kind of look loud right now, as far as, in other words, they're kind of jumping out at you. But once I start painting in this grasshopper and take some of these areas down in here and then the bottom underneath of it and the back, they're going to be a quite a bit darker than this. So that will change things a lot. Right now, what looks to be the darkest will actually be the lightest once the painting's done. Let's go ahead and leave that dry and we're going to take off our frisket. Okay, I think we're dry enough that we could start lifting it off. Now, this is just technically a rubber cement pickup is what they are, but it works really well for picking up the frisket. And I will just work it off real easy. And there goes our lines, as I thought. It's coming off nice and clean, so that's all we need. We don't want to damage the surface of the paper. If you do, it will leave a mark. You got to make sure everything's completely dry. Otherwise, you may break the surface of the paper. And then when you put paint down there, it'll react different. A lot darker compared to everywhere else. Now, I wanted to make this background dark enough right in here. Only because the top of this stem is... Just about pure white and I'm not going to have a real bright color unless I have a darker background I'm trying to create the white top of a cattail up against a white background is pretty tough I put it on pretty good so it's sticking pretty good but I will redraw everything you can see my uh, grasshopper is completely gone 
so I won't have to redraw it. So if you do use, just do the very outer perimeter of your drawing and then go back and match it up later and then draw in the center after you pull your frisket off. Eyes are gone, everything's gone. But that's okay, we have a layout and we can do it again. But there's the outer perimeter and that's what I'm looking for. But that graphite paper, that I use serial graphite paper and it comes off pretty nice. There's no wax in it at all. That's what you have to be careful though, because it will smudge. But I don't want wax in it for myself. There's my fuzzy edge. That didn't work out too bad. Okay, there's our background. What the frisket gives us a chance to do is a very spontaneous, very splashy background, but you're not painting around something. It'll look like you're painting around. You can take it right across to everything and then create a pattern that is not controlled by your subject or your object itself. You can just do whatever you want and it works great. And then you have all these little wee shapes, all these little contours uh, that are just only three coats of paint. And then I can even take some more and just splash this in here a little wee bit, very light, very subtle. But what I could do though is wait and see how dark my grasshopper gets in the cattail. And then if I have room to take the background darker, I could. But remember, you could always go darker, but sometimes it's a little bit tough if you go too dark too quick, and then you might be in trouble. I'm going to go ahead and re-pencil this in with the layout, and I'll be right back at you as soon as that's done, and we'll be ready to start painting our grasshopper and cattail. Okay, our background is nice and dry, and if I want to change a little bit of anything in the background, just redo some things I can always just paint over or around it but what I wanted to show you first is I went ahead and freehand drew this in the entire grasshopper and compared to my original drawing I actually improved the freehand a little bit some of the things weren't lining up very good and then plus I put some more detail and this line right here is going to be a separation of colors uh, compared to this is kind of like a brownish down in through here and then it goes up to like a quinacridone gold up in here so I want to definitely uh, signify that color difference on the leg when I start painting because again remember we're going to have to start with our light colors and then just keep going darker and darker and then in here where all these little uh, platelets are or whatever you want to call them uh, up in here I just went ahead and drew them out as accurate as I could because once I start painting them in and then defining them even further with real dark lines then I'm going to be set in those particular shapes. Now what I could do is actually put some frisket back over this leg so when I'm pulling a lot of just single lines just a lot of line work to define that cattail stem then instead of stopping I might end up with a lot of sharp points down at the bottom and I don't want to draw a line straight across because everything is vertical in that particular uh, texture but by constantly having to stop or start below or above the leg then I might end up with a very specific pattern right along the edge of the leg so if I want to keep those lines going and then just not worry about having to start or stop because of the leg is keep in mind they are fairly close in value so I don't know if I can make the leg dark enough since it's in uh, more of a direct light to cover up that vertical pattern then I may want to protect it while I do that so once I get ready to do that stem I'm going to go ahead and just put a quick patch of frisket over that leg then that way I could just go to town and paint the vertical lines without having to stop because keep in mind if I use a real fine tipped brush then I'm going to have to stop and then I may end up with a whole bunch of v-shaped lines at the very bottom right at the edge of the leg I don't know if I want that I want to just keep on going with a specific pattern as if the leg wasn't even there and if I put frisket down that's what I'll get I can ignore the leg completely. 
And then we're going to start painting in the head and this area in here first. But what I want to do, the only reason why I bring that up is I'm going to zoom in on our reference and zoom in where I'm painting. This way you can see what's going on a little wee bit better. As Again, remember this, this painting is only 7.5 by 11, so it's, it's not real big. So when I start working in on the tight areas, this is only about an inch from here to here. And maybe a little wee bit more. That's it. Not much more. So we're going to start painting this in and we're going to get going. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just do this stem right now. I'll first go ahead and put the frisket down so it dries good before I start painting. And then once I paint this stem out, I'll be able to lift it out and I'll be ready to go. Let's clean that up one last time. And again, I'm going to use my soap. Okay, that's nice and protected. Now, this way, I'm going to put a highlight on that leg also. And then I'll protect the, the whitest of white that I can on the paper. Okay, now here's all the new brushes we're going to try. For this, I'm going to use a real small one. I will probably go with the zero. That is the smallest one that's here. I'm not sure if they go smaller. They might on the individual purchases of the brushes that are not in a set. I'll just give myself a little bit of guidelines here. Doesn't have to be exact, but we'll go for as close as we could get. Okay, that's where I get into a little wee bit of a different texture down in there. And we'll just put couple little patches here and there. And this is where, just like this patch, I'll be using a little bit more burnt sienna in this patch here. It's a little bit darker on the stem. This way I could just paint straight down and continue whatever pattern I have started. It's going to be very subtle changes, but nonetheless still a change. And we're going to have a shadow coming down across here from the leg. And I'm going to make that a little wee bit on the bluish side so it doesn't just look like a color change on the cattail itself. Let's start with quinacridone gold. Now I'm going to start a linear pattern already just to get me started. And I'm going to mix in some raw umber. I just mixed out the paint. This is just a clean brush. I'm dragging it a little bit over everything. It's a nice sharp point. Again, now I don't have to worry about stopping for the leg. I could use a bright to paint this in real quick, but what I like to do sometimes is just start with a smaller brush and already begin some kind of a linear pattern early instead of trying to redo a flat wash. And now that it's wet, I'll get some movement in color. That's okay, that's what I want. Once this dries, then I'll go back in with a lot of script work. It's gonna be dark back in here. Again, I don't have to stop. I'll get a little bit of texture, which is what I'm looking for out of the backside of the hot press paper and just I'm going to have to paint around this because that's a fairly light area got to watch what I'm doing here actually it's pure white in the photo I'm going to start making some textures now and leave some white behind very subtle texture but as I keep adding to it the contrast will become bigger and bigger. So what I'm already doing now will make the difference as to what I end up with. But this is the lightest value I'll be using. A little bit of burnt umber right along the edge. That'll start my shadowed area. I probably should have Frisket at this leg too, but I'm going to try and paint up to it for now. 
the line direction is in my favor so far. So far, I really like the brush. I'll tighten it up a little wee bit more. Once this dries, I'll start getting some real fine streaks. This might not be down low enough, but I'm going to leave it where it's at now. And once this dries, it'll lighten up a good bit. And I don't want to keep on making this darker until this dries, only because it'll keep on puddling and flattening out, and I won't be able to get it as dark as I want it. In other words, if I keep adding color to this, it will make it darker, but it won't be a specific kind of darkness. If I leave this dry first and then take another layer over it, it'll build up quicker. It won't puddle out. Constantly looking at my reference, too. Just to try and stay with it. But once I start putting the line work in and the darker lines, I need that dark and it should be light. And I'm painting around the leg, I do like the frisket better. If they have a brush even smaller than a zero, I think I'd get it. This might still be wet a little bit too much yet. Looks like it's bleeding out a little bit. And I don't want this to be a perfectly straight line either. I'll have to leave this dry. Put a little wee bit more dark around the edge. And this is going to be very dark back in there. I'll even take my burnt umber, mix it with a little bit of French ultramarine, get more of a grayish. Okay, I'm going to let that dry so I can go back over the stem. And I'll put a very subtle texture up in here other than just pure white. And then we're going to go back over and redefine some of these lines. I'll make them a real dark line. But I don't want to make it, if you look real close to the, you might not be able to see it as good as I can because it's up on a full screen, 24 inch screen. But these lines are not just a perfect straight line. That's not what I would want to do. I'm going to make them dash, dotted, thick, thin. That's what will create a little wee bit better of just a perfectly straight line. It'll look like it's floating up above the stem itself then. So I'm going to break it up and just make it. It's a, it's a crack the whole way down, but I want to just make it broken up with different thicknesses and thins and then uh, just to make it ragged uh, so it just doesn't look like a straight line. In nature, there are no perfectly straight lines. Let's leave this dry. Okay, fast forward while this is drying here, I'm going to go into this and start the eye and the head and that will be yellows, quinacridone golds. Little wee bit of gray here, but if you look real close, there's a very subtle edge right along here that's highlighted. It's almost like if it was a type of an armor plate, it would curl up a little bit. So we're gonna keep that. But we're gonna start off with yellows and golds. Even the areal in right here would be good. It's still a little bit on a juicy side, so I gotta mix it way down. And then I'm gonna leave some of it, even though it's still a pure white too. We'll put the antennas in last. Now this I definitely have to leave dry because there's gonna be some hard straight edges in there. I really can't do too much to this. I might be able to go back into the stem pretty soon already. I could do the eye. I have to watch that when I paint up close to the edge of the eye, now if I start painting darker colors in the eye, I got to make sure they don't bleed out into the rest of the head. So that's why just be careful when you do a little bit on the finer work that if you start doing a little bit more detailed work, if you want to like a looser painting and you want the colors to bleed into each other all over the place, that's fine. But in this case, you might not want that. And with a hot press, once this dries, if I still want like a quinacridone gold or a raw sienna, I'm sorry, raw umber to blend and bleed into this, I could still wet it down with clear water and then take that straight color into it and let it bleed in. That'll just be an optical mix. The welt's wet. I could do a little bit of that now. And then I'll just dust it right out around that will be the start of my shadowing and shading 
And I'll just take it down a little bit at a time. There's no reds involved in that as far as burnt siennas. And a lot of this is going to go a good bit darker. And there's that tooth of the paper coming out, which is great because it has a very subtle texture to it. I might even, that, that highlight right along the edge of this is so fine, I might even just put it back in later with uh, a tinted white. A lot of this is going to get real dark where all my pencil lines are. So uh, this will be the lightest. Okay, let's let that dry. Okay, you got a rough idea what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go in and just start cleaning up some of these lines and everything. If I want a soft transition here or there, just not a perfectly straight line. In other words, leave a blend down. But once I start adding all the complexities of colors going in, and the eye and everything else, then I'll be able to do it. I might start with the eye first. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and jump into some speed painting. And then you have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing now. And then I'll take the mask off also and once this is done to go ahead and start painting that leg in too and then the dark darkness of the back leg will be uh ready to go also but it'll be darker so i won't have to worry about it i can paint up to the stem there that shouldn't be too much of a problem there let's go ahead and do some speed painting working on the head and bouncing around different areas when working on the eye i will put down half as much paint as i need and then blend the rest in towards the center. Now I still might go back over with a highlight of white that is quite different than blending out around the white. Sometimes it has a little bit more of a snap to it when I put a strong white highlight on top of a shape. This I think I will do for some of the legs and even the edges of different pieces of the exoskeleton just to be able to put down the whites and give myself a very hard controlled highlight. I backed it off a little bit and just went back so I could see more of the cattail working on it, roughing it in. Remember, all of the colors that are very light, I'm going to just put very light grayish blues in just to have shadowed areas between the tiny seeds of the cattail. This again will be pretty much done and require very little paint for something that is just about white. In this type of watercolor, it will always be the paper that is the white with very little accents or value changes over it. Working in again with some of the back legs, I may have to make some adjustments here and there. Putting in my fine dots, they will make the wings look a lot darker than they really are just because of the optical mix. I'm going to take everything back and go to a full size painting again so I could finish the cattail, clean up the grasshopper itself. Let's see what we got. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have here. I have some work to do up in here, pretty much everywhere so far. But what I'm gonna do is clean up some things. I'm gonna finish the cattail but then I'm also, I have to still take off my frisket here and finish this leg and this back leg and do a little bit more work on the cattail before I do that. And then I have to make sure it's dry. But what I decided to do is I'm going to go back over with some touches of white here and there. And if I mix the white down with water, then it'll allow some of the color to bleed through. So even though it'll be pure white, it will still look like it's, it's a uh, tinted white. Uh, whether it be uh, just a yellowish or the goldish, whatever color it's over. And then uh, some of these other highlights I'll put in along the edges of the leg. If I paint those in nice and clean, I think they'll come out better than trying to paint around a real fine highlight. And then I'm going to do a little bit here. I made a corporate decision to make this a little wee bit darker. I thought it would show up. Uh, the uh, abdomen a little bit better versus these colors being up against these colors and then uh, just we're going to do the rest of the cattails what i'll do next is i'll pan out to the whole picture and then to the whole reference and we'll go ahead and finish this up and chat about it after it's done let's finish this one up okay we dropped back to the full 
picture and painting. And now I'm just going back over some of the darker areas. This is where I may stray away from the photograph just a little bit. If I want to improve uh, just a certain section or maybe some values, colors, uh, actually line work, anything that might be a little bit better than the photograph itself. Because keep in mind, even when I start working on the antennas, the antenna that's closest to the viewer, you cannot see it at all. So again, this is just one more example of where photography just cannot compete with the traditional painting. There is a, quite a few limitations of the depth of field, shutter speeds, different things that have to do with photography compared to stacking up images, references, information, and creating a painting as a whole. Now working in with the lighter areas of the fuzzy white seeds, I went ahead and also dropped down the f-stop just a little bit and made it a little wee bit darker. This way you could see the very subtle fine bluish gray lines that I made that is in the shadowed areas of the white. Working on the top leg, I finally took off the second coat of the frisket just to protect the leg and it worked out rather well. Now working in on the back leg, I'll go back and forth again just to make sure I leave some areas dry thoroughly before I go back in with another layer. There is the antenna I was talking about. The one closest to the viewer in the photograph is just about completely out of focus and for that reason you can't see it. Going back and forth with some burnt siennas, browns, different areas I'm working with. I just want to kind of snap up things that need a little bit more attention. And then now finally going back over with my whites and just a tinted white that actually it will soak into the paper just a little bit. So I may have to apply a second coat or cut back on the water. It depends on how strong of a reflection or just a highlight that I want in any given area. Finally finishing up very the last touches. This one is just about done. Let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, let's see what we got. We're going to take the tape off here first. And I always try and pull the tape away from the painting so it doesn't tear or rip, shred the paper. And I'm going to take this one off just a little bit and we'll leave a little bit to hang it. That is the deckled edge. This is just an eighth of a sheet, about seven and a half by 11 again. There's our nice straight edge. This is just blue painter's tape, but it works pretty good. I'm happy with it so far. It's not tearing the paper. It is releasing. Uh, the purple tape works even better, the clean release. Okay, let's take a look, just real quick. Again, the antenna I put in was so out of focus in the photograph, it was actually not even seen, that it was so blurry, it, it dropped off about right in here, and then you couldn't even see the rest of it. Now, with that in mind, to do that photographically speaking, I would have to do a focus stack, and wherever this would drop down, even with the cattails, the cattails are coming out at you also. So, for that reason, this antenna is too. So, I would have to make sure that wherever this would drop down in planes again, that I would be working with maybe a quarter inch of depth of field at a time, I would have to focus right here, then right here, then right here, then right here, and then right here and so on. And what I'm doing is slowly backing away from the cattail and the grasshopper itself to focus stack all those pictures. So that would be a challenge in itself. 
Now, depending on what a client would want, then I could either provide a photograph the way they would want it, if that's the way they would want it, or just an illustration. A lot of field guides, magazines, uh, different types of outdoor literature does like the typical traditional illustration. Now with that in mind, I went ahead and cleaned up just the, the white areas, uh, the highlighted areas, and then just some real fine detail. I even darkened up the video by about two thirds of a stop uh, just to be able to see the very subtle cobalt blue and cobalt violet shadows of the white areas. And again, this is just a challenge that if you want to really practice what colors you need to mix, because remember, this isn't digital. Uh, there is a big difference where you only have a specific amount of paints, maybe 16 or 18. Uh, some artists work with even less than that. So to achieve all the different colors you need to achieve, then you're going to have to practice on what colors you'll need to mix to get a certain value. Is it a reddish tan? Is it a yellowish tan? A goldish tan? Anything in between, those are the colors that will determine what you're going to mix. Now again, it doesn't have to be a grasshopper. It could be anything, an object, a, a car part, a, a, a sports object, baseball, basketball, anything you can. But the trick will be the better the photograph, the better the painting. You need a ton of information to create a nice detailed painting. Even sometimes more than one is necessary. So now that this is pretty well done, we put on our own little splashy background in just a couple light coats. Again, now that the grasshopper is much darker than the background when we first started, the background was fairly dark and it looked kind of scary what we were going to do but I needed a darker background to actually portray the lighter areas of the head the top of the cattail and then the cattail white area itself here if it blends in a little wee bit that is okay I would call that a lost and found and that is where two different objects and two different planes share a like value then you can go from one to the other and that creates a three-dimensional movement sometimes it's very important in typical composition okay let's call this one quits this one is done i'm going to definitely get into uh, acrylics here soon and that way it would be a completely different way of thinking and painting where you paint around the white and watercolors I may start with dark colors and then go back over with a whole bunch of fuzzy whites in acrylics. There you could just keep building lighter values on top of dark values. And what's most important about acrylics is you can't make a mistake. You just keep painting until you like it. So that's one nice thing about it. Whereas watercolors, it could be getting pretty critical. The longer you spend on a painting, the more critical it gets as it goes, because then if you slip up pretty bad or pretty noticeable, you get to start over. This one was done in the digital a couple of videos back. I decided to just also do it in traditional just to compare the two. I'll put the link up now of the digital, and this one is now done. With all of that said, Thank you very much for making it this far. If you find anything out of these demos, please like and subscribe. And until I see you next time out in the field or back at the studio, thanks for watching.